Welcome back to another Q&A with us, the British Fist. Of course, you guys know the drill. We know the drill. Comment any questions you have down in the comment section below. There are any of those links in the description box. NJ, can you do that little thing you do that you didn't steal from our truth? Brother! The first question is from Howard Starr. If Hulk Hogan does come back to WWE, do you see him part of the Daniel Bryan Randy Orton storyline? You know, I think if Hogan comes back, it will be for WrestleMania 30. And I think by then that storyline may have finished. So I don't see, even if he did, I don't see him getting involved because they've already got, what, Triple H in there, um, people like that. So they don't really, it's not really necessary in my opinion. Well, the fact is, WrestleMania is meant to be, you can almost see the card as it goes up. So I think by then, yes, Orton and Bryan may be finished. I don't think you need to add Hogan to it when you've got Triple H doing the pin over. Hopefully. I think if Hogan is going to be used by WWE, it would be some kind of star attraction for WrestleMania. Maybe some, not ma not a match, but maybe some kind of appearance or some kind of segment or something like that of another wrestler. I think that would be where you'd bring him back. Not with this storyline here, in my opinion. Richard Collins. If they brought Adrian Neville in as part of a tag team to the main shows, who, uh, who would you like his tag team partner to be? Adrian Neville... From, uh, I mean, I, I guess I'd like him. I probably Drew McIntyre. I don't know because they're both British. I'd like to for him to form a British tag team, like like he does in NXT with Oliver Gray, even though he's out injured. So you could stick him with a Justin Gabriel, even or an Alex Riley, just another talent like that. Two choices, you ready? Justin Gabriel. I want to see him back on TV, and Kobe Kingston because he's tag teams with everyone. Well, what happened to Justin Gabriel? I just where is he? He was in the Nexus, then he was pushed. He was one of the big benefactors of the core storyline. And then they had this whole thing with him in South Africa. They brought him back and then he's not been on TV. I haven't even seen him on NXT. I, I imagine he's, he must be injured or something. It's a shame because Justin Gabriel, yes, he was in a good tag team with Heath Slater. You could see them working out. And him on his own, yeah, you could see a possible good mid-card, entertaining, good performer mid-carder. But the WWE didn't see that. Does WWE need a, need a Daphne-type character in the women's division? They need some kind of out-there character in the women's division, I will say that. Because um, they don't really have any characters in the women's division where you're like, you know, wow. Apart from maybe AJ Lee for, uh, for odd reasons, but you don't really see a character in the women's division where you're like, yeah, that's a standout. Right now, I think even if we had a Daphne character, it still wouldn't be enough to help the Divas division. I think they need to repackage the whole division because it's not working. The Toon 99. This is a Survivor Series question. Miss Rhodes, Big Show, Ziggler and Goldust versus Triple H, The Shield and Sandow at Survivor Series. You know what? As good as that sounds, I kind of think they will have Big Show... Cody Rhodes, Goldust, Daniel Bryan, and one other person that's involved in this corporate storyline versus The Shield, Triple H, and Orton, if they do it like that way. That's how I feel they would do it, but maybe they'll want a championship match as the main event, which means that maybe you wouldn't have them involved enough in the big 5-on-5. Five five. There is potential there. I, uh, I used to see the 5-on-5, five five, which you just listed, until the Triple H and Randy Orton friendship seems to have broke apart when... <laughs> Oh, you didn't reward me back my championship. I hate you, Triple H. So their friendship, yeah, they're both heels, but they're not together anymore. And you know what their Survivor Series team would be called? The Breakfast Club. Because John Cena would probably be in there as well. That would be hilarious. Uh, Pep Guardiola or Jose Mourinho? I'm guessing this one's for me, as this is a football-related question. Um, Pep, next. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't like football, do you? Or yeah. soccer, as some people might call in here. I, I definitely say Mourinho. Uh, he is the special one for a reason. So, I mean, and he is in the Premiership, and I, I like the fact that he's back in. It really brings a, a new flair to the to the Premiership, in my opinion. <laughs> he's not Ric Flair. He's the special one. All the wrestling god. Prudent Advantage. Are any of you guys getting W2K14? It's shaping up to be a great game. What do you think? Oh, yeah. What do you think about the roster so far? This is, I'm handing this over to you, because I don't play wrestling games. Sadly, it's came to a point where they minus stuff things out of games to add new things. The games are not getting more difficult. They're just adding new storylines. So me, probably when it's been out a couple of months, yes, but not straight away. Button bash pin, one, two, three. Yeah, next. ASO120100. Did you watch the NXT leaks of the mic presentation? I did. I did actually watch some of these, and they were actually quite good. You saw Xavier Woods on there. Enzo Amore was on there. 
Uh, they had loads of characters like 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 breaking character and doing different like sketches like you would in like a Broadway show. You know, like if you're practicing to do a Broadway show and you're like tuning up your voice and doing stuff like that. And you see like these promos that go. They were actually quite entertaining. What purpose they they had? I guess it was to try and show the upper the suits like how good or bad they were or whatever. But you know, I did think they were quite interesting. No. Don't know whether you saw them though. No. Did you? No, well, it doesn't really matter. You're not missing much. Put it that way. Apart from Enzo Amore, you need to watch Enzo Amore. Soft! Dynamite Mayhem. Name your favorite in WWE in the following categories. I like these questions. Wrestler. Triple H. Pre-2011 rock. <laughs> Theme song. I've always liked... We all want before yeah. that. Classic before that. I'm going to have to give it to... The game has always a good... So I've always liked, you know, Shawn Michaels. Uh, New Age Outlaws. That was the best theme, in my opinion. Gimmick. Gimmick, I'd say it would have to be the barrier. Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> Goldust. WrestleMania. It's got to be 17 for me. It's just a classic. WrestleMania match. I'm going to say it's going to be Rock vs. Cena 1. <laughs> well, just because Rock won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew it. TLC 2. Pay per view. Favourite pay per view. Tough one. Oh, it was Summer Summer Slam 2002. That if you're one not had, talking about WrestleMania 17. That had a full card. Summer Slam had a full card of matches that were good. Mm. I, again, I'm going to not favourite one, but it's going to be up there. It's going to be the TLC 2009. 2000, uh, TLC 2009. Pay per view match. I'd say, I'd say, ah, Mick Foley versus Triple H, Royal Rumble Street Fight. That was my favourite pay-per-view match. Not uh, counting WrestleMania. Oh, I thought it was a WrestleMania match. It can be any pay-per-view, but I said WrestleMania match and pay-per-view match, and I'm taking it to be non-pay-per-view matches. Pay-per-view match. You could say one of the Rumbles that Triple H won, you know. What, 2002, the only one he won. But the, uh, the one I'm going to say, uh, pay-per-view match, I'm going to give it to... Shawn Michaels versus Ric Flair. Damn good, damn good WrestleMania match. Street fight match. That would be what I just mentioned. The uh, Mick Foley versus Triple H street fight match at Royal Rumble. Or Triple H Shawn Michaels. One of the two. And Hell in a Cell match. Mankind versus Undertaker, King of the Ring. That was a great, that was one of those Hell in a Cell matches that just was more unique than any other we've seen. We could say, yeah, Taker and HBK, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say uh, uh, Triple H Mankind. It was a damn good one. No on way out 2000. We got the DVD. What do you think is the best match? Worst match, best match nice. concept, and worst match concept. Ah, here we go. The best match. Rock and Austin at WrestleMania 17. Not because I just, I don't know why. It's just, it was one of those matches that I was into and I bought and the thought the finish sucked, but I think overall it was the best match. I'd say because of it probably needed to happen was Rock defeating John Cena. Worst match. The second one. <laughs> Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg, WrestleMania 20. Or maybe Sting versus Magnus at Bound for Glory. Best match concept. TLC was a damn good one. Combining tables, ladders, and chairs. I do like that. Ten years ago, Hell in the Cell. Yeah. <laughs> worst match concept. Now, Hell in the Cell. <laughs> <laughs> Anything on a pole match. I'll say that. Luca Quarter. Can you imagine if John Cena came a GM when he retires in about 10 years' time or less so? <laughs> I do hope not Cena doesn't come back in Jan, because if he does, then we will see Cena in all that mania. So, I, to be honest, Lovely. I could see that happening with John Cena. It's like, WWE want to keep him around. They want to have a reason to keep him around, so they make him a GM. To me, you say the word retire, I think you should just accept that and get the hell out of it. You know, you've you got you to remember... John Cena is in peak physical condition. He is never going to retire. He's going to be like Sting, only better. So who should win the 2014 Royal Rumble from now and bookings? I'd say one a good one would be Daniel Bryan. Um, you know, you kind of kept the title away from him. You could keep you could keep his, you know, they say the thrill of the chase is the best part of a storyline sometimes. So having him built up, win the Royal Rumble, he's one of those characters that can do and then win at WrestleMania. That's how I would book it. I wouldn't have him win the title now. I'd have him win the title of WrestleMania in a bigger match. If we're saying now, due booking, not who I want, I think booking-wise, the fact, yes, they put a lot of concentration on Daniel Bryan. I think he's got, he's had his concentration. 
The second wrestler I think the WWE are contrary on is obviously Punk, but I don't think Punk should win it again. Well, Punk hasn't won the World Rumble yet, has he? So not a bad shout, actually. I'll say Punk, Punk, even though him back in top picture, maybe not, but I'll say Punk. When do you think this Ultimate Man Family feud will end? WrestleMania. So it'll probably end at WrestleMania, yeah. I imagine, I imagine Vince is going to come in. Maybe he's going to have like Vince, John Cena versus Orton, with it being sort of like the whole premise being around like who gets the company, the Triple H or Vince McMahon. I reckon that's what they'll build this WrestleMania around. I think the biggest storyline <laughs> is if you've been watching Raw for the last month or two, Triple H is claiming Raw or the WWE as his when it's not his yet. It's still Vince's. So I think Vince is going to come back and claim his WWE. So at WrestleMania, there's going to be some kind of big match between uh, Vince and Triple H. I think that would explain why Cena's getting the title shot. So yeah, Cena is the world heavyweight. Randy Orton is the WWE champion. And then they do it that way. Sir Lord Mark, what's the best pay-per-view you have ever seen? Well, we said WrestleMania 17, SummerSlam 2002. One of those two. Uh, what's the best and worst pay-per-view this year? I can't really remember. What's the best pay-per-view? I don't, you know, I don't, there's no pay-per-view. I think to myself, it's wow, that was good. Stream Wars is all right. Worst. <laughs> I don't think SummerSlam was the best. I think but... one of the TNA ones. Uh, Battleground was terrible, which we'll talk about in a minute for the next question. But some of the TNA pay-per-views, like Genesis, remember how bad that was? It was just like filler pay-per-view one-on-one. Oh, no, I'm saying this now. I don't care if it's one of the final ones. Bound for Glory. I did not see any real strong interest apart from one match. That was Angle vs. Rude. That was the best match on the show. I'll give it that. But yeah, it was pretty dire. Did you see... Not only that, but did you see how Bush League the whole thing looked? There was like barely any fans there on the non-camera side. It just, it didn't feel like TNA's WrestleMania at all, did it? Nope. And with this new pay-per-view battleground around the corner, this is probably asked before battleground. What, what would you name a pay-per-view? I'd go back to the classic. Yeah. I'm just saying that. Yeah, back to the classics. Like not maybe not a backlash, but like a Judgment Day or a No Mercy. No, I think Extreme Ruled is fine. Yes. Like, that's worked and fine, but the other ones bring back like No Way Out. Yeah. And all that stuff. Definitely so. Mr. Wrestling Fan 8. Do you think Alex Shelley could have been a bigger star than Chris Saban? No. I mean, none of them, in my opinion, are big stars. They're, they're at best a very, 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 very good tag team or X Division guys. They should never have really got above that point. I mean, Alex Shelley really never did, but Chris Saban has, and I'm just like, why? I think Chris Saban coming back from injury and trying to build up his career to prove that he is still one of the best in his division... I think I'd go with Chris Saban at the two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd say that too. Uh, Mr. Jermaine418, how about Melina? WWE want her back in the deep division to go up against AJ. Melina, not a bad shot. <laughs> Just for the entrance, really, if anything. Or well, she does the splits, yes. Yeah. But again, there's a lot of divas I think she come back. But Melina, we haven't heard of her in a while. Especially after she... Jomo went. She could have been a part of possibly TNA, you know, fit in there, but... Her coming back, she was a good performer. I just maybe didn't get the most concentration that she should have. WWE 6636, do you think CM Punk is overrated? We've had this question quite a lot of times. And you know what? CM Punk is a very good wrestler. He has great mic skills. He does have a rather unique character in that sense. He has a presence about him. So I think in the sense that he can be a main event of a WWE Yes, I feel that is how he kind of should be rated. As like, let's say, a guy who's better than John Cena, for example, and higher on the card than him, then Ness, you'd be overrating him, in my opinion, in terms of a draw. I don't see CM Punk as overrated. I would like to know your definition, so uh, why you think he may be, because you must be asking because you think he is. Let me know in the comment section. But for me, I think the fact that CM Punk's proven against some of the best and he's had pretty strong matches... He's not had the book and John Cena's had, but I think he's not overrated. RFV089, does the does TNA lack direction? As some of its divisions have gone downhill in the last half a year, like the tag team, women's, and next division. The women, let's start with the tag team. Barely any tag teams, and now who are our champions? Bromans. From this video, yes. From this video, yeah. Um, which is going to be released Wednesday anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Women's, there's only three. It's gone from a great knockout division to three knockouts. You know, they tried to bring back the X Division as this like mid tier belt that's going to be but that's going to be like the second top belt in the company. But it opened the pay per view, and we've got Chris Sabin as the champion. And yeah, 
the belts have gone downhill. They really have, especially at Bound for Glory. When I look at these three, you said the tag team. I think is the fact with the big releases didn't help. The oh, fact yeah. that TNA misused gut check. Yeah, the tag team has been failing for quite some time. Women's, they've got enough women, but like everyone screams out for bringing new ones. X Division, the fact that Bound for Glory, they added in people who have branched out yeah. of the X Division now shows how they're not using the talent in that division anymore. It was, it was a last minute thing, really, wasn't it? It's was like, well, we can't find Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe, pay per view spot, or Austin Aries. Let's just stick him in the X Division match. That's kind of how it felt to me. When watching a film, what is most important to you? The characters, the writing, or the storyline? Good question. You know, this, this, this. This, has relation, this has a relationship to wrestling because, you know, a lot of, the, a lot of things in the Attitude Era were about characters and storylines and stuff like that, and that's what brought in the casual fans. But a lot of the more, a lot of the more hardcore fans prefer, like, the quality of wrestling, which I could say the quality of the film or the quality of the acting. If you look at Twilight, you know, Twilight... Everyone thought that was a terrible film, but it grossed the biggest amount of box office. Therefore, that makes it a very good film, if you look at it like that. So, to me, they all it's all important, but the most important thing is storyline. If you don't have a catchy storyline, then you don't really have a film. But at the same time, if you don't have a good protagonist and a good heel, you don't really have a storyline either. The way I'm going to go with it, in order, I think as the story has to follow through, make sense, and not leave people thinking, uh, and the acting, we we like movies because of the actor who plays the part in the movie. So I think goes the storyline, then the actors. I've recently read that How I Met Your Mother is scheduled to air its final season this year. What are your thoughts on the show and the characters? Well, the best way I can describe this would be to... Basically, I, I, when when I first met How I Met Your Mother, I like I wasn't I didn't watch it like live or anything. I watched like the whole I watched the whole like first five, six, seven seasons in like two weeks. So I was really really into it. And lately, I've been kind of like you know, eh, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, I've just been like, well, yeah, I could watch it uh, again. I'd rather watch something like Frasier or Everybody Loves Raymond or Big Bang Theory. So my my thoughts on my How I Met Your Mother it started off like yeah, now it's gone like. Mm. I think How Your Mother had a good storyline and they built up a storyline over the seasons, but it's not something I rushed to watch. Comedy, yes. Good acting from the character they chose, yes, but not something that I'd tune in to see each week. Deco5757, most hardcore slash extreme wrestler ever. Abdullah the Butcher, enough said. Uh, I'm going to go with... My next one is going to be Sabu. I just really like that. I really like his character. Whatever he did. I don't know. Howard Stark. What rematch would you want to see back... What Ah, ah. What rematch would you wanted to see back then? Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. Bob Backlund versus Iron Sheik. Or Hogan versus Yokozuna. Hogan versus Ultimate Warrior. Yep. Ultimate Babyface versus Ultimate Babyface. You know, that... I'd love to have seen them rematch. I mean, if I was living at the time and I'd seen the first match, which in my opinion was really good and very underrated in my opinion, I'd definitely have that as my rematch. I pretty much. The other ones take nothing away from them. They were still big matches in their own way. But when you've got Hogan there, who at the time was obviously the biggest thing going, and you had the uh, ultimate, yeah, there we go. Ross Parks. This is this is good. For, I love it. This is a great question to end on. Do you think WWE should hire Miz's dad as a character after his fantastic emotion of Miz getting killed? He could appear every week just as Miz has finished getting destroyed and just look over him and stare. Miz's dad. Just imagine that as a character. Just imagine Miz working with his fake dad. <laughs> Do you not like that idea? Hello, Hello. dad. Talk about dad, there we go. And now, people, that's another video for Mr. Parkin <laughs> and me and Jay. And my dad. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Until next time, goodbye.